What's up everybody, Doug Lane, Fast Lane Car Care. I'm gonna show you today how I rotate my tires. Uh, it's a 2018 4Runner. Uh, it's basically gonna be similar for any vehicle. Um, four wheel drives are a little bit different if you wanna get technical um, or all wheel drives, but uh, tools you're gonna need. This is, I'm gonna tell you the way I do it. Uh, get yourself an impact if you don't already have one. If you're just learning, uh, you, you know, you wanna try this on your own, get yourself a breaker bar and whatever size socket you need. Um, you can also use a ratchet, but you know, with this, especially one like this that flips around, uh, you can get those off pretty fast once you get a, the, the wheel broke loose or the lug nut broke loose. Normally, I just use my uh, stubby impact, uh, Milwaukee. Um, today I'm gonna bust out the big dog. Absolutely no reason other than I've only used this one time, so why not? Uh, Toyota. For your 4Runner, you're going to need 21 mil. I've got gloves. Another thing you're going to need for sure is jack stands and some kind of a jack. So, without too much goofing around, uh, if you don't have an impact gun, you're going to want to break all your lug nuts loose while it's sitting on the ground. Otherwise, your wheel is going to turn and it's gonna make it really difficult to break that loose, especially if you usually get this done at the tire shop. Most of those, most of those tire uh, shops and stuff are just gonna run it in with a big old air impact and you're not gonna break them loose uh, when they're up on the ground or when they're up off the ground like this. The impact, you don't really have to do that, but like I said, 21 mil. this put all my lug nuts right here for a second really I need to sit them on the floor okay so a lot of times man these get rusted on there especially if you're up here in the rust belt watch this that's it that's all there is to it now these tires uh, they're going to get replaced for, for before winter for sure. Uh, they got a little bit of tread depth, a little bit of tread left, tread depth left, uh, but they are not great. So what I'm looking for right now is uneven wear. Um, it almost kind of looks like, I don't know if you can see it, but it almost looks like it's doing a little bit of cupping, uh, which generally means you need to run a higher air pressure. These are about 36 PSI is what I ran in these. It's a little bit higher than factory, but you also have to consider whenever you change wheels and tires or change tires, and uh, that no longer matters. And so right now I got a little fluid film. You don't have to use fluid film. You could use uh, any kind of spray grease, uh, chassis grease, you know, like you just dab it on there with a paintbrush or whatever. Try not to get it on the lugs, on the wheel studs, so that way your lug nuts don't have any issues. But um, I like fluid film. I like the Amsoil spray grease. If you have a dealer or you are a dealer or whatever, I'm gonna check my pads while I'm in here. They're getting low, especially this inside one, which I knew it would. It would be getting close. Um, come back here to the back wheel. Same deal. I like to check my tread depth. Looks like we're getting a little cupping there too. Let's see. So get one of these, it's a tread depth gauge for like 90 some cents, a dollar, whatever, any part store. You can see we're in the yellow still. Um, what, what we can do, we can just go through here and check. Yeah, see how we're a little bit uh, thicker right here. A little bit thinner right here so yeah we got some uneven wear I'm not super worried about it but especially since these tires are just about done for anyway uh, a lot of debate on 
How to rotate these. Uh, you know, do you just go from the front to the back? Or do you go from crisscross? Uh, I honestly kind of switch it up. So this time around, I'm gonna go crisscross. Um, sometimes I do it the other way around. Uh, check my pads as well. <coughs> Fluid film is great stuff, man. I'm gonna go ahead and just spray that brake line while I'm in here. Sometimes I'll just go over like, I mean like anything that you may have to, you know, you may have to work on in the future. Uh, that's metal. <laughs> Just go ahead and... This stuff smells atrocious, but... It works really well. Um... That being said... We're gonna go around. Go over here to the other side. Oh man, I'm getting my impact all dirty. So hopefully you can see right here where the uh, inside of this wheel contacts this, especially when you uh, really crank them down and you get a lot of crappy weather, road salt, stuff like this uh, that we have up here in Ohio. Um, it can really make taking these off a, a, a big pain. And the, uh, it got all over me. The reason why I do this is you never know when you're going to be stuck on the side of the road and uh, you know you may have to change a flat so you're using those little janky jacks and uh, you know if, you're, if your wheels rusted on the rotor face it's going to be real difficult to Get that off of there uh, especially safely man you, you take those little jacks they're unsafe as it is but then you give yourself a little bit of a uh, uh, you know say you're off uh, say you're off a little bit you know you're off camber a little bit like on like I said on the side of the road on the shoulder or something like that uh, it's not going to be pleasant for you I can promise you that just for kicks and giggles I'll show you guys something right after I and generally if I didn't sit here and try to explain everything to you and show you all this stuff I can have this process done in 20 minutes right now I don't know I think we're somewhere around 10 minutes <sighs> excuse me we're not really hustling we're not hurrying Just taking our time always hand thread these first I know some people like to try to run them in with the impact, uh, don't, especially these wheels and lug nuts, for whatever reason, they're kind of a big pain to start. Everything's really got to be on there pretty well uh, before you can get them to start. It's really easy to cross thread them if you just try to run them in on an impact. Some cars you can get away with it. The lugs are like more exposed. I like to make sure, see like that, it felt like it was on, but then I jiggled the wheel a little bit and it popped right off. I don't know if you can see that, but this collar goes in that wheel 
in that opening. So it's got to be perfect. All right, so we got all those on there. So what I did there is I just crossed, crisscrossed, made sure it's it's just snug. I was just kind of letting it do its thing there. Now we can come back. Now we could be using a torque stick to limit our torque. Really what you need to be doing or should be doing is using a torque wrench. Um, once you set this back down, use a torque wrench and then retighten these after, uh, I don't know, usually the owner's manual says like 75 miles or something. If you have really nice lug nuts, don't just let them fall on the floor like I am. Um, these are just stock factory Toyota 85,000 mile lug nuts. I don't really care. This was a customer car or something, I'd probably be a bit more cautious, but it's it's mine, so I don't really care. See how easy that is, man? This is, look, how long does this take? Ten seconds. Ten seconds per wheel. And uh you don't have to worry about, you know, you don't have to worry about your wheel uh, being rusted on there when you're trying to do an emergency tire change. Let me tell you what, if you're not the type that carries around a breaker bar, like a legit breaker bar or an impact and real tools in your car, uh, and let's say you get a flat tire and, uh, All you have is that little tool that it comes with. You're gonna have a real rough time trying to break lug nuts that have been put on with the tire shop because they're gonna be super tight. It's not gonna be fun. Now something I did before I even uh, Before I even started filming, I went around, checked all my air pressures, and even them all out to 37 PSI. There's some pretty cool tricks you can use a uh, sidewalk chalk to figure out what um, tire, like what is the ult the ultimate, the optimal tire pressure for your specific application. Um, your wheels, tires, and honestly, each corner is probably going to be different, but um, for me, I'm not that picky about it. I can generally see these tires have already lasted me 50,000 miles. They'll probably go another 10,000 before winter, before I, I change them. Uh, so, you know, 50, 60,000 out of a tire. I don't really need to get that nerdy and check, you know, I don't need this one to be 37.2 and that one to be 36.5 and I just, I'm not that into it. If you really want a hyper mile or uh, get them, you know, the absolute max out of your tires, then that's something you need to do. Um, I just, I'm not, I don't, I don't do that. Why do I do my own tires? That's probably a good question I should answer. Here's a little, here's one way we can cheat. We got one started. Snug it up just a little bit. And that's gonna kinda hold it right there on the wheel. It'll make it easier to get these other ones in. Same deal. 
I like to get a couple, you know, two or three turns. Make sure they're on there before I go zippy zapping them. So, why I do my own stuff is convenience. Uh, and I know it's done right. Not that there aren't a lot of great tire shops out there. Most of them, like I said earlier, the owner's manual wants you to come back and retorque these every 75 miles or after 75 miles or 50 or whatever. Um, because some of them will loose, loosen up. In my experience on this truck, that tire is going to be the only one that loosens at all. And it's going to be like a 16th of a turn, like next to nothing. Um, not a big deal. But other cars other situations other wheels uh that's it's going to be a different deal and they don't want the liability so instead of cranking these to like i think the torques on this like 96 foot pounds what the manufacturer calls for they're going to put it on there more like 200 you know they're just going to get it on there so that way even if it does back off a little bit it's still tight Okay, so uh, convenience, it's 7.30 uh, Sunday. I'm, I'm probably not gonna go anywhere and get these done or be able to go anywhere and get them done. So, you know, that's why I do my own stuff. I can do this right here, you know, put my lubricant on it and that way. In You know, now I don't have to worry about, I know how tight I'm gonna put these or get them or whatever. Plus I got my lubrication on there. So I know if I ever have an emergency, uh, I'm not gonna have to fight to get this off. So we're back here, had to talk to a customer. Oh man, seriously. So in this one, I'm gonna show you how to do it a little bit old school. We'll use our breaker bar instead of the impact. So I think we got that one already on there. So you're kind of just gonna use it like a screwdriver almost couple different ways you can do it we're gonna kind of do the same thing we did with that other front just get those snugged up a little bit take some of that movement out so that way we can get the rest of these started And uh, I don't know, I mean, I guess I'm gonna tell you uh, why we skip lug nuts is so that way the wheel is more, uh, more likely to be tightened evenly. If you just tighten this one, like if you just went around, like it would be putting all this pressure up here and there's a possibility this wheel wouldn't quite get on there as tight and secure. So that's not what you want. See what I'm saying? Like once you start putting pressure on it, it just wants to turn the wheel. Okay. Um, I don't feel like messing with this once I put the car down. So if you did that, if you're using a breaker bar, you didn't have an impact, 
you would need to um, go around after you set the car down or truck or whatever you're working on after you sit it back down get it off the jack stands and all that then you're gonna go back around and tighten them up some more um, really ideally you'd have a torque wrench but you know if you're just starting if you're just trying to do this at home you're you probably don't have one Um, that's pretty much it. All you have left to do is uh, take your vehicle off the jack stands, uh, clean your tools up, put them away. Um, this would be a great time to go underneath and check any of your uh, U-joints if they need grease, you know, and check all that stuff under there. Again, if you're just trying to figure out how to change a tire, rotate tires to save yourself some money, probably, you know, not gonna know how to do all that offhand. Um, I'm like 2,000 miles away from an oil change. Normally, they kind of line up together, but uh, it is what it is. Uh, when I do my oil change, I'm gonna have my skid plates off, so I go under. I'll go through there and do all of my axles uh, or my my uh, my drive shaft U joints and all that good stuff, and um just kind of do a thorough you know want to check your wheel bearings make sure there's no play you can do that right now too easiest way to tell if, it, if a u-joint or not a u-joint a wheel bearing is going bad uh is to grab a hold of it tire kind of give it a shake um you know that's gonna do two things one's gonna make sure you got your your wheels on there tight two gonna tell if you got a wheel bearing going out This is a Toyota, so I don't expect it to, but. Um, so there you have it. Pretty much how you do that. If, I mean, I don't know, if you're gonna get into doing this, uh, you know, you're wanting to save yourself some money and stuff, get an impact. Like, you don't have to get this great big thing they're making constantly they're making smaller and smaller and smaller impacts this is plenty enough it's 3 8 stubby impact milwaukee it's a couple three years old now it'll take lug nuts off just fine um it's way lighter than that honestly uh, i'll probably trade this in to my cornwall dealer if he wants it if he'll give me a decent price for it but uh let's go ahead yeah so the other thing I do before I put all my tools away, this is just kind of bonus. Take a tub of towel and a shop towel. I'm going to start on the impact because it's going to be the dirtiest part. Just wipe it down. I wrote the torque specs on this particular model because it's an older one. I had to actually look it up. Um, it's 450 foot pounds breakaway is what they claim most of the time Milwaukee's are a little bit uh, underrated meaning that most of the time they will actually you know actually overperform so I'd estimate somewhere around 500 foot pounds but um, I keep saying this but if you're gonna get into you know automotive uh, even just to save yourself some money like just get you know whatever impact you can afford it's gonna do two or three hundred foot pounds and that should be enough to get you started um, especially if you're gonna start doing your own tires you know on your own um, if you do take it to a tire shop because uh, you don't have time or you get new tires or whatever fully expect to have to get your breaker bar out because uh, they're gonna they're gonna crank them down I clean up every tool. Even if I only use it for a second, it comes out of the box, uh, unless it's doing something clean. I mean, if I'm taking a screwdriver and taking you know batteries out of the kid's toy or something, I'm not gonna clean it for that, but messing around with uh, cars and all that stuff, I certainly will. 
So this is a, this is just a regular Craftsman 21 millimeter socket. Ain't none special, you can get them at Lowe's. I'm sure you can get them other places now that sell Craftsman uh, as they've kind of come back, but it's an impact socket. Not my favorite. Um, I don't like how this is all like flared in. Here's an icon, uh, you know, it's not all bubbled in or whatever. So it's kind of one of our personal preferences type things, but probably gonna have to move that. But anyway, there you have it guys. That's how you rotate your own tires, whatever vehicle you want, not a big deal process is very much the same don't get wrapped up on uh the circle pattern cross pattern uh if you really want to get technical i should have dropped the spare tire down and but i'm not doing all that the spare to me is a spare in case of emergency i don't care if it's off by a little bit so uh that's all i got guys thanks for watching